Again, good evening and welcome. Let the church stand. Receive the cross of Christ, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. May your ministry renew within us the commitment we all made in baptism so that all may see the works that we do and give glory to God.
It gives me great pleasure this evening to welcome all of you to our Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi. In particular, do I welcome Archbishop Vigano, who is the Apostolic Nuncio for the country, and through him we have uh, Pope Francis with us this evening. Let us welcome Archbishop Vigano. We welcome our two cardinals, my brother bishops, archbishops and bishops who are here, our priests and deacons, religious men and religious women, and uh, the family of Archbishop-elect Wester, and um, ecumenical and civic leaders who are here, and so many others who gather with us this evening. I thank God for Archbishop-elect John Wester. I prayed that he would be the one who would succeed me. And I kind of backed it up by calling a couple of cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm grateful, very grateful that he's the one that uh, is here. So we pray for you, Archbishop Wester, uh, tonight as we celebrate our Vespers. We ask God to bless you richly with these wonderful people that uh, you will take over responsibility as their shepherd tomorrow. May God bless you richly. Yeah. <laughs> God, come to my assistance. Glory to the Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen.
I have a gift to, to give to our new Archbishop, and uh, it is a, a cross that uh, has the uh, turquoise and silver, which of course is the traditional things of the land of enchantment. And on the back it has, oh, how beautiful. Plus, plus Michael to plus John. And uh, it is of course June the 4th, 2015. Thank you very much. Made by one of our uh, excellent artists. We have many artists here in Santa Fe. Ramon Lopez. Ramon Lopez. Thank you. Beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's a little different than the one I have. It's a little more elegant. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> very good. Yeah. Thank you. My life is at the service of the gospel. God has given me this gift of his grace. My life is at the service of the gospel. God has given me this gift of his grace. without fault, he who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart, he who does not slander with his God.
A reading from 1st Peter. To the elders among you, I, a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's suffering and sharer in his glory that is to be revealed, make this appeal. God's flock 
is in your midst. Give it a shepherd's care. Watch over it willingly, as God would have you do, not under constraint and not for shameful profit either, but generously. Be examples to the flock, not lording it over those assigned to you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you will win yourselves the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the man who loved his brethren and never prayed for them. This is the man who loved his brethren and never prayed for them. He spent himself in their service and never prayed for them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is the man who loved his brethren and never prayed for them. Thank you very much, Archbishop Sheehan, for this very beautiful gift. I'm very touched by that and very grateful to you. When I was here last month, I take note that you gave me the book, Death Comes for the Archbishop. <laughs> and now you've given me a cross to wear, so I, I'm starting to detect a pattern here. I'm most grateful to you. Thank you. And I'm certainly echoing Archbishop Sheehan's words of welcome and so grateful to Archbishop Vigano, Cardinal Leveda, Cardinal Mahoney, all my brother bishops who are here tonight, and uh, guests and friends, uh, my dear family, my mother, my two sisters, my brother and brother-in-law, um, so many friends from San Francisco, from Utah. I'm very, very grateful to you all. I know that it's uh, a bit of a journey, and I truly appreciate your presence here tonight. In a very special way, I am particularly grateful to all from the Archdiocese of Santa Fe who are here tonight and who have shown me such hospitality and warmth and a great welcome. This has been a great grace for me, and I'm grateful to you very, very much. I wanted so much to be with you tonight to pray with you on the vigil of the installation tomorrow to have a um, a quieter night of prayer, a little bit more on team, especially with those of you who mean so much to me now and are so important to me and to my ministry, those of you with whom I will be sharing ministry in a particular way. I think of my brother priests of Santa Fe, my closest collaborators. I think of the religious priests and brothers and sisters, of the deacons and their wives, of the lay ecclesial ministers and leaders in our midst. And I wanted to gather with you to pray tonight and to ask you to pray for me, in particular, that the Lord will always guide me in the years ahead, to pray that I will be an elder in the light of St. Peter's words that we just heard proclaimed. I believe that the Spirit is aptly captured by the description given to the liturgical leader of the assembly, a leader who was strong, loving, and wise. 
And it is also captured, I believe, in the life and ministry of one recently beatified, namely Archbishop Oscar Romero. Last week in the Cathedral of the Madeline in Salt Lake City, many of our El Salvadoran priests organized a beautiful mass on the occasion of the beatification of Archbishop Romero, which took place on May 23rd. The Archbishop had a profound influence on many people because many people had a profound influence on him. It is my fervent prayer to be influenced by you, the people of this local church of Santa Fe. As I strive to be a good shepherd in your midst, humbly asking for your prayers and guidance to do that. Please pray for me that I will be the leader that St. Peter speaks of, indeed the leader that St. Peter was. And I believe that he and Oscar Romero give us an insight into this leadership in a particular episode in the Archbishop's life in El Salvador. It seems that in the midst of so much violence and difficulty, the Archbishop got word that one of his priests was killed in the streets. And furthermore, that the priest had a gun in his hand. The advisors to the Archbishop said that it would probably be better if he did not go to the funeral because it may appear that he condones violence if he did. However, Archbishop Romero eventually did go to the funeral. And he said that that priest's mother will be at the funeral. And I am his father, and I will be at the funeral. I thought about that last week as we celebrated the Archbishop's beatification, and I thought that this truly exemplifies important aspects of leadership in the church that we've just heard tonight from St. Peter. Peter calls himself a fellow elder. He puts himself in the position of one who asks. I make this appeal, he says. I don't command you, I appeal. This is the only place in the New Testament where we see these words, a fellow elder. He's very humble, as was Oscar Romero. He did not worry about his image or what others would say or think, but he sacrificed himself for the good of the priest's family, the good of his church. Please pray that together with all those in this archdiocese with whom I share ministry and leadership, that I will too be humble, relying only on the Lord for strength and seeking only his honor and glory and the good of this local church. Again, we see that St. Peter exhorts the elders to be generous. This means not only not seeking repayment for their service, but generous to the point that they suffer for the ministry and the people served. Peter speaks of himself as a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Oscar Romero suffered for his priest that was killed. He suffered certain pushback, criticism, and eventually suffered the loss of his own life so that he could support his flock. And so please pray that with you, I will be generous on all levels and that I will give fully and completely of myself for you, my fellow elders, as we seek to serve God's people with a shepherd's care, not counting the cost. And the verbs used in tonight's readings, I don't speak Greek, but I'm told that they're in the aroist tense. It's a mood that connotes urgency, concreteness, reality. Guard the sheep, guide the sheep, feed the sheep, enfold the sheep. Peter wants them to do it now with a sense of importance, priority, and proximity. Oscar Romero exemplified the same sense of urgency he knew that he was targeted for assassination. He would not have a driver or a bodyguard because he did not want their lives to be in danger. He knew the score. He ministered with urgency, knowing that his time was limited. And so I pray that I will have the same urgency in your midst as together we serve God's people, my dear sisters and brothers, priests and deacons, lay leaders. 
I pray that this ministry entrusted to me will be my priority and that nothing else will distract me or in any way attenuate this first priority to be a shepherd in your midst. And finally, there is a true joy in Peter's plea and humble request. Willingly watch over the flock, Peter says. This implies joy, doing it gladly, not because I have to, but because I want to. Oscar Romero exhibited the same joy. He was always smiling in the photos that I've seen of him, even though he knew his risks. He was close to the Lord. In a very early memo or journal to himself, he wrote, in recent days, the Lord has inspired in me a great desire for holiness. I have been thinking of how far a soul can ascend if it lets itself be possessed entirely by God. Archbishop Romero knew the joy that came from closeness to God and the service of his people. And so please pray for me that with you, I too will be joyful in my ministry, knowing that Christ is the source and summit of all that we do and that this closeness will bring true joy in all aspects of our ministry together. I'm very grateful for the moment of grace of these days. I feel your support and prayers, and I thank you for it. In a particular way, I want to thank you, Archbishop Sheehan, and all that you have done to introduce these wonderful people to me, your flock, and for your personal support, friendship, and guidance. It is very clear to me that you, for 22 years, have been a faithful shepherd, as Peter would want. You have fulfilled his request, and you've done it with great joy, humility, and generosity, even to the point of suffering much for your people. Thank you, Archbishop Sheehan, for the example that you give me as I try humbly to follow in your footsteps. And so I am eager to join all of you as a fellow elder and with you to share in the glory that is to be revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Priest of the Most High God and mirror of goodness, you were a good shepherd to your people and pleasing to the Lord. Priest of the Most High God and mirror of
priest of the Most High God, and mirror of goodness, you were a good shepherd to your people and pleasing to the Lord. priest among men and women and the representatives before God. We honor him and in our frailty we pray. You marvelously illuminated your church through distinguished leaders and holy men and women. Let Christians rejoice always in such splendor. You forgave the sins of your people when their holy leaders like Moses sought your compassion. Through their intercession, continue to purify and sanctify your holy people. In the midst of their brothers and sisters, you anointed your holy ones and filled them with the Holy Spirit. Fill all leaders of your people with that same spirit you yourself are the only visible possession of our holy pastors. Let none of them, one at the price of your blood, remain far from you. The shepherds of your church keep your flock from being snatched out of your hand. Through them, you give your flock eternal life. Save those who have died, those for whom you gave your life. <laughs> Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us offer the prayer Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You can hold this for me. Hold this. Hold this for me. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord. Watch over us by day and by night. In the midst of life's countless changes, strengthen us with your never-changing love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.